Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Mr. Sacedo's YouTube videos. We're going to be going through atomic notation today, so make sure that you follow along with your notes and that you write down everything that you're seeing. So, atomic notation, something that you already are aware of. Elements differ in the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now because they differ in the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons, there has to be a way of organizing them. So if you take a look at a periodic table, like the one over here in the corner, uh, you'll see that elements are organized by atomic number. Now atomic number is abbreviated as a capital letter Z, that means atomic number, don't ask me why, but you can see very prominent atomic numbers on this periodic table. So hydrogen's atomic number is 1, lithium's is 3, beryllium is 4, sodium is 11, magnesium is 12, etc. Okay, now what does that atomic number tell you? So great, uh, hydrogen has an atomic number of 1, lithium has an atomic number of 3. Well, the atomic number tells you the number of protons. Now why is that important? Well, that means that by just looking at the periodic table, you can find how many positively charged things there are in the nucleus of each atom. Now think back to J.J. Thomson's experiment, and in case you don't remember what J.J. Thompson's experiment was. That was where he discovered the electron. Uh, so he found these little tiny negatively charged things and he conjectured that there had to be some positive part in the atom as well because we know that atoms are electrically neutral and so they have no overall charge. So just like here, all atoms are electrically neutral. So if the atomic number, like for example again, hydrogen has an atomic number of one, that tells us we have one positively charged thing, so that must mean we also have one negatively charged thing, because hydrogen is a neutral atom. All atoms are. And so that means that we have equal numbers of protons and electrons. So that means that the atomic number, which is abbreviated Z, gives you the number of protons, and it also gives you the number of electrons. They're equal. So you can pick any element on the periodic table. For example, calcium. Calcium has 20 positively charged things in the center of its nucleus, and also 20 negative things zipping around the outside of the nucleus. And you can do that with any element from the periodic table. Now what about the elusive neutron? We didn't even get a chance to talk about Chadwick's experiment because it was a little bit complicated and you need to know a little bit of physics in order to understand it. But because neutrons have no charge, atoms can have a different amount of neutrons. So for example, let's take hydrogen again, since hydrogen was a good example. Uh, it has an atomic number of one, which let me know that I have one proton and I have one electron. Now that doesn't tell me though how many neutrons I have. So neutrons, question mark, I don't know. And so let me draw a little diagram of what that might look like. So let's say I have a hydrogen, okay, that has to have one positive charge, so it has to have one proton it has to have one negative charge sort of around the outside. Now I can have a different number of neutrons because neutrons don't have a charge to them. So that means I could have no neutrons like I have right now or I could have one neutron or I could have two neutrons and that just so happens to be kind of the limit for hydrogen but theoretically I could have as many neutrons as I want. And so again, neutrons are kind of the elusive last particle, and so we have to talk about them. Atomic number does not give us the number of neutrons. It only tells us the number of protons and the number of electrons. So in order to find the number of neutrons, we happen to have a new piece of information. Now there is a special name for elements that have a varying amount of neutrons, and they call those isotopes. Now iso means same. And it's actually something that John Dalton was kind of wrong about. He thought that every element of, like, lithium, for example, was the exact same as every other element of lithium. But what he didn't realize is that because there are different numbers of neutrons, you could have different weights. And so, you know, you could have a heavier isotope of lithium that had extra neutrons, or you could have a lighter isotope of lithium that has less neutrons. Now, how are we going to... First of all, keep track of how many neutrons there are, and how are we supposed to tell the difference between different isotopes of different elements? So we have to introduce a new type of number, and that's called the mass number. Now, just like atomic number is abbreviated Z, mass number is abbreviated as a capital letter A. And that tells you the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. So don't get this mixed up. So if we're looking at our 
um, atomic number, that just tells you the number of protons. And incidentally, because they're equal, also gives you the number of electrons. What atomic number gives you is protons plus neutrons. It gives you both added together. And that's very different. So how is this ever used? Well, mass number, because it gives us the number of both protons and neutrons, it's used to distinguish between different isotopes. Because remember, isotopes are just elements that have a different amount of neutrons in them. And so all you have to do is you take the name of the element, for example, right here we have carbon, and you add the mass number at the end. So we have carbon 12, like this guy right here in this picture. We have carbon 13. So you have carbon 13 and you have carbon 14. All you do is you take the name and you add the mass number to the end. Now how useful is that? Well it's actually pretty pretty useful. So here are our examples. We have neon 20 and we have neon 21. Now let's pretend, I don't know if I can actually do this, but this might take a little bit of time. Uh, let's pretend I'm only given neon 20 and neon 21 as my pieces of information. Theoretically, because I know that I'm dealing with neon, I should be able to figure out the number of protons and neutrons. So now, how do we get that neon 20 has 10 protons and 10 neutrons? Remember, our mass number gives us the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So if I look at my periodic table, which you can do, neon is number 10. So it has to have 10 protons. That's a given. I can't really go anywhere else with that. Now because the mass number is 20, that must mean that if I had 10 protons, I must also have 10 neutrons because mass number equals number of protons, which was 10, plus the number of neutrons, which must have been 10 in order for it to add up to 20. What about neon 21? Well, neon 21 is just a different isotope. So I have still the same number of protons, but I have a different number of neutrons. How would I be able to get that? Well, neon is still atomic number 10, but I now have to have 11 neutrons in order to add up to 21. And so that's sort of how we figure out the number of neutrons. We have to know two pieces of information in order to figure out the number of neutrons. So here's kind of our summary slide for atomic notation. And so in order to express mass number, atomic number, and other information, we use atomic notation. That kind of rhymed. Uh, so first we have our mass number, which is the number of protons and neutrons. We write that in the upper left-hand corner as a superscript. In uh, atomic number, we represent that as, again, the letter Z, and that's in the lower left-hand corner. And then, of course, you have your atomic symbol, which can be anything from the periodic table. So just for example, let's say I had calcium uh, 40. All right. Well, its mass number is given to me right here at the end. It would be 40. I have to look up the atomic number of calcium. That's 20. And then the symbol is Ca. So that's how you would write the atomic notation for calcium 40. And you could do that with anything. So let's say I have helium 4. Okay, so helium 4, I would represent that as number 4 at the top, because that's the mass number. 2 is the atomic number of helium. And then the symbol is He. That would be our atomic notation for helium-4. Pretty simple. So we can get a lot of information from atomic notation. I mean, we have the mass number, so we can find protons and neutrons. We have atomic number, we can find protons, we have an atomic symbol. Now the only piece of information that's missing here has to do with electrons, but remember, for atoms only, the number of protons and electrons is the same. So whatever Z is, that's going to tell me my number of protons. It's also going to incidentally give me my number of electrons. So just kind of a bonus piece of information there. So here are some example questions. So what is the atomic number of the element below? So I'm given just atomic notation. So the question here is, which one of these numbers is giving me atomic number? And it is the blue one. So the atomic number of lithium is 3. You could have also figured that out by looking at a periodic table. Which one of these is our mass number? Well, if we know that this is our atomic number, then the number 5 must be our mass number. That's telling us that this is called lithium-5. That is the isotope that we're seeing. How many electrons would this isotope have? So this is an isotope of copper. And the question again is, which one of these numbers tells me the number of electrons? And that is right here, 
Remember, atomic number, that means I have 29 protons. And if I have 29 protons, I also have to have 29 electrons. How many neutrons would I have here? Well, remember, I have two pieces of information, and in order to find neutrons, I need to know two things. So I have my mass number up here, and I have my atomic number down here. So this gives me the number of protons and neutrons. This gives me the number of protons. So all I have to do is subtract those from each other, and I'm left with just the number of neutrons. So if I do that, 63 minus 29, that gives me 34 neutrons. Write the atomic notation for sodium-23. So, I need to have my symbol for sodium. That's Na. I need to know where to put my 23. My 23 is my mass number, so I put it up there. And then I just have to look up the atomic number of sodium. And the atomic number of sodium is 10. So this would be the correct atomic notation for sodium-23. This is our final question, and it kind of gives us an example of everything and trying to find everything. So, how many protons, how many neutrons, how many electrons does copper 63 have? Well, remember, protons and electrons are the same number. So, 29, that would be the number of protons. That would also be the number of electrons. Now, what if I have to find neutrons? I need to know two pieces of information to find neutrons. And so, right here, I have my mass number, which is protons plus neutrons. And remember, my atomic number here on the bottom is just protons. So if I subtract those from each other, I end up with the number of neutrons, which again is 34. And that's it for atomic notation. So if you had any questions, make sure that you sort of go back and look at this video again. And uh, be sure to ask any questions tomorrow in class.